So today I'm going to show you how I color graded these three photos using the infinite color panel in Adobe Photoshop. What is going on YouTube? My name is Mo and I'm a car photographer from Bahrain. If you'd like to learn all about car photography and Photoshop, then go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss out on all the cool stuff that I create every week. Now before starting, I'd like to hear from you. What do you use to color grade your photos in Photoshop or Lightroom? Do you use LUTs or do you use specific presets in Lightroom? Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. So I came across this infinite color panel about a week ago and I kind of decided to give it a go. And to be honest, I find it very useful. I really like the way the tool works and I've kind of enjoyed color grading with it for the past week. It gives you that head start, kind of starting point of your grades. And sometimes it's just more than enough the way it is. Now, enough talking. Let me show you how it works in Photoshop. All right, so here's the first photo that I'll be working with. I shot this photo about a couple of weeks ago at my friend's wedding. And I thought, you know, I'd give the A7 III a shot and the results were amazing. This was shot with a shutter speed of uh, 1 50th of a second at f2.8 at a focal length of 200, which is usually very shaky. So I'm not going to go through the a7 III. I'll leave that for another video. For now, I'm just going to prep it for Photoshop. I think the highlights are hot. So I'm gonna bring down the highlight slider and maybe just a bit down on the exposure, okay and I'm going to open it in Adobe Photoshop. All right, so once you install the extension or the tool, you'll have this icon over here, which activates the extension. And I'm just gonna place it right here, right now, just for you to see. Now let's break down the um, panel. Um, what you see right here, you have different intensity. So you can start with light, medium, and intense. I kind of like the medium. Uh, this is a good start for me. And if I think it's overly done, then I can tone it down. I'm going to speak about the harmonized feature in a bit. But for now, the tool basically gives you these three different color adjustments. And you can disable or enable them as you see them fit. For example, let me start with these two adjustment layers, the color balance and the selective color, and then I'll hit create. And as you can see, it's created these adjustment layers for me, and they work well together. Now, if you didn't like the grade, you can always just hit create again, and it will give you different options. And that's the beauty of the tool. It could spark the idea on how you are going to color grade that photo. Now, let's say that you want to add curves to the mix. You just click curves and create. And as you can see, created the curves down here in which you can also control. Now, you can always go back to the individual um, adjustment layers and you can adjust it from there. So I kind of like how this looks like. It's one of the uh, options that this panel gave me as a starting point. I think it's great. Let's see the before, and this is the after, before and after. Now, like I say, the beauty about this panel is that I can always go to the adjustment layer and I can do my own modifications there. Now, let's say that, well, I don't want blues in the metones. Then I will move the slider to the left and add yellows, for example. And this Cantones. Now let's see the before and after. And I can always um, drop down the opacity to the individual layers or the entire um, grade. All right, let's move to the next example. All right, so the next example is actually my awesome little beast, the Audi RS3. Now, I have edited this photo, but God knows when. But, you know, I thought I'd give you an example on how it works with cars. And it just fits. All right. In this example, I'm going to get the intensity to high, which is intense. And I'm going to select 
all of the adjustments. So color lookup, gradient map, selective color, color balance, and curves. And now I'm going to hit create. And now I'm going to just shuffle through until I find something that I like. Okay, I think I found something that I really like. Now, like I said, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Now, all you have to do if you think you need to work further and more on the image, you can always go to the single adjustment layers and adjust it from there. Now, here's another nice feature within this panel is you can always go back to the individual layers. Let's say you like all of these, but you just think that the color lookup doesn't fit. So you can always go to the um, shuffle button down right here next to the color lookup and click and click on it. And that's going to just shuffle through the different LUTs till you find something that you like. Now, isn't that awesome? So let's have a look at the before and after. That's the before, that's the after. Great. So now off to our last example. This is a friend of mine. Her name is Haifa. She is a YouTuber under the name of Fly with Haifa. I'll leave a link to her YouTube in the description below. Make sure to check her out. Now, this is kind of a bit of advanced grade, I would say. Now, why do I think that this is an advanced grade? I use the infinite color as the base grade and then I continued color grading on top of it. And I'm going to break down the grade right now. So let's see the original photo. This is the original one straight out of the camera. And it's, as you can see, it's a bit overly saturated and um, I don't like the color tones in here. So the first thing that I did, I actually added a blank layer just to retouch a bit of the photo. Now I didn't do a lot of retouching. She has a really awesome skin. And then I did a dodge and burn layer. Now this is the dodge and burn. This is the before and this is the after. You see, I, I dodged and burned around here and the flowers itself. And then I used the infinite color panel, as you can see. And I perhaps just adjusted the curve to raise the blacks. And then I added a channel mixer. Now, if you've been following me on YouTube, you'd know that I use the channel mixer a lot. And basically I use it to desaturate the photo. Now, if I put the opacity to 100%, it gives you a really lovely kind of black and white photo. And you can adjust that within the blue channel. All right, let's just get it back. And then I added a brightness contrast adjustment layer. And basically I just wanted to um, decontrast or lessen the contrast in the image. I usually do that when I'm about to add a LUT, which is a color lookup. And then I added the color lookup and it's a Kodak 5205. I think the, these comes by default with Adobe Photoshop. It's at 100%. And then I added these overlays, which is the, the red petals. I think that's how it's called. I basically tried to match the tone just with my eyes. It didn't do a really great job, but I think it, they just like work perfectly, I think, for this example. And lastly, I used the camera raw filter. Let me open it up. So here are the adjustments that I basically made in camera raw filter. I added a bit of sharpening and I played around with the HSL adjustments. So um, moved a bit of the colors around and I was just eyeballing the photo to see something that I like and I would leave the adjustment there. Now within the split toning, I added a bit of color in the shadows and it's not too much, just a bit of colors of the shadows. Now if I put that down, you see it's very minimal, but it adds up to the photo. Now under the effects, I added a bit of vignetting just to draw the eyes towards the center and added a bit of grain. Now most of the work was done under the calibration. And again, I was just eyeballing the photo to see something that I like, and I would leave it there. And I really recommend that you play around with these. And it's really subjective. 
to individuals. And that's it from here. And that's how I ended up the great. So let's have a look at the before. This is the before. And this is the after. All right, so now before ending this tutorial, let me talk about the harmonized feature within the panel. So let me delete this one off. And by the way, you can always stack different grades. Let's say that you really like this. So grade one. And let's turn off, let's say, or turn on. Yeah, why not? And then create. Now this stacks different grades on top of each other and you can add as much of grades as you like, given that of course you would just rename the folder so you don't reset your grade, so on forth. Now I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to click on harmonize. Now what does the harmonize do? It creates three different adjustment layers, one for the highlights, one for the mid-tones, one for the shadows, and it picks up these values from the photo itself. It's amazing. Now let's see the before and after. This is the before, this is the after. Now again, once again, the beauty of this tool, you can always go to individual layers and you can adjust them as you see fit. There you go. Now if you're wondering how are they actually tying these layers to shadows, mid-tones and highlights, that's because they are using the blend if for each layer, targeting metones. And let's see the shadows. Pretty sure it's going to be at the shadows area right here. And the same goes to the highlights. Now, if you'd like to know more about the tool, I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. Now, if you have any questions for me, however, you can always leave me a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you in the next video.